turnover is really the difference in this game. They trail by six as they begin play in this. We'll hope for the best that this one will roll into the end zone. The Bills will have it. 307 and two timeouts left. Down by six. We're in this predicament because of turnovers. Hogan had one. Woods had another. Orton's thrown a pick, and he's also fumbled the football. Those four turnovers really the difference in this game. They trail by six as they begin play in this quick crossing pattern. Shallow cross is connected to Robert Woods. Chad Greenway making the tackle number 52. They've gotten 30 plays and more from him today coming off that rib injury that had him on the inactive list a week ago. Second and seven. Horton again, this time to the tight end is Scott Chandler. Now that's a great play call right there. The Vikings have been showing this defense with A penetration, A pressure the whole game. Right here, Anthony Barr's in the A gap. They get Chandler out, out wide. He has to go all the way across from one A gap to the other and cover Chandler in the flat, which is a very tough job. You can't let a disguise get in the way of you covering your man. And now they're back to the A gap pressure once again. Hey, hey, hey! What is your mic? The lady! Look up! Orton is flushed from the pocket. Floyd in hot pursuit, and he gets rid of it outside the tackle box. Jury Floyd, 73, providing that pressure. Can Kyle Orton, as a starter in this league, get above the 500 mark? It's 72 games start. Coming into today was 36 and 36. That's the exact position you want to get Kyle Orton in. He's a straight drop back passer. When he has to improvise on plays, when he has to run, leave the pocket, he's a guy that's probably going to throw the ball out of bounds or take the sack. Great job by the Vikings defense. Hard to sign a guy on August the 29th and have him up to speed to take over as he did a couple of weeks ago with that win over Detroit and not skip a beat. Over the middle and caught. We were wondering when we'd hear from Watkins, we just did. 19 yards and a first down at midfield. Looked like Watkins ran a deep in on the play. Come across the field. You expect the linebacker to be in that boy. Nobody was there. The safeties come down and make the play. Huge first down for Sammy Watkins. Dixon back in the game as we approach the two-minute warning. Orton. In traffic and thrown down. Linville Joseph. So another sack for Minnesota. And it's a negative yardage play, and we're under two minutes left. In a game where ball control really does matter statistically, Minnesota's had the better of it. Buffalo. Hey, now facing a second and 17 after that sack by Linville Joseph. Out of the shotgun. Trying to get some of it back, and Chandler dropped it. The ball was a little out in front, but that's one I know he feels he should have had. He definitely should have had that. Anthony Barr with the linebacker in coverage. He had him beat. You have to just pull that in. We saw that same defense from the Vikings. I think they smell a little bit of blood in the water. George Edwards. Mike Zimmer going back to that bare front with the A-gap pressure. Let's see if they can exploit this offensive line from the Buffalo Bills once again. Well, three out of ten on third down conversions. Their best of the day with third and six. This is a third and 17 that faces them. Orton again. Sacked again, this time at the 40. And it's Tom Johnson, 92. The first to get there, he had a lot of help. The pressure's coming, you see Barr coming right through the middle. Everybody's busting through that offensive line. They can't hold it tight, and they get their sixth sack of the game. This is big, fourth and 20, he lets it go. Chandler's got it, first down. He atones for the drop. What a huge play, Greenway on coverage. Chandler at 6'7", the huge tight end right here running down the middle of the field. Greenway has to stay on his hip. He can't let the tight end get on top of him. 
Chandler bends the ball in, makes it a nice, clean read and throw for Kyle Orton. That is a veteran savvy play that they haven't had in a long time here in Buffalo. Uh, he's a stake of all of the quarterbacks that they've had in this organization in recent years. There's the previous play, the one that he missed. You, and that would have gotten about two thirds of the 17 yards back. But boy, does he make up on a seam route with the tight end for 24 yards. Big time play. And Orton was under a lot of pressure. No denying that this veteran out of Purdue is a big time quarterback. And Chandler, his favorite target at tight end, atone for the mistake. From the 36. Got, who was it? Yep. Yeah, it's going to be procedure. I think the false start against Buffalo might have been Chris Hogan. False start offense number 66. Five yard penalty. His first down. Chandrell Henderson, right tackle, rookie, seventh round pick out of Miami. Simultaneous, didn't they? Could have easily been offside. On first and 15. Watkins pass thrown just behind him. Incomplete. Credit that to the pressure. Once again, Sharif Floyd putting the pressure on. You see Sammy Watkins was wide open. But Orton gets absolutely obliterated on the play. Let me say this too. Watkins saved an interception. If he doesn't get his left hand on the ball, it's picked off. The interesting thing is that the Vikings, now they're showing the A-gap pressure. When Chandler converted on third down, they didn't have that defense. Now they're going to that defense solely. On second and 15, shallow cross to Hogan to the 38-yard line. Look at this play again now. Watkins knows he can't catch it, but he does get a hand on it. If he doesn't, Robert Blanton, 36, picks that off. That's an interception, and it's ball game. Now I'm looking at the matchup with Chandler. Who has Chandler? Third and 12. There's the crossing pattern. Watkins, first down, Buffalo. Timeout, Bills. Robinson on the tackle. And Inside release, he's beat right off the bat. Let's go to the replay. You see the crossing route, Woods goes out. Watkins comes in. Two seconds on the clock. And Orton is excited. In these types of situations, I like to run a banjo defense. You, you just bracket, you bracket the two receivers. Whosoever is on the outside of the play, you take the guy coming out. One guy comes out, the other guy comes in. Put him on a rubber band, huh? Seven career, fourth quarter comes back. You think about it, Orton, this would be monumental for this organization. They need this game. I mean, they're three and three, a game behind New England. A young and talented team, but bruised and battered today without their two best backs. Spiller went down after a 53-yard run. Jackson, their most consistent player, went out prior to that. And this hungry Vikings team, uh, flipped the script on quarterback sacks and are plus two in the turnover category trying to get a road win a much needed road win for them Orton lofting it miscommunication yeah, that time Chandler was running in the pass went out Kyle did not want to absorb a sack you see the Still. Oh, here it comes. Oh, we are going to get a late flag. Intentional grounding, perhaps. Well, that looked like a miscommunication to me. I agree with you. I think I think he thought that his tight end was running an up and away. Intentional grounding. Wow. Number 18. There was no receiver in the area. The thing to because correction. Ball replaced at the spot of the foul. And there's a 10 second runoff and a loss of down. And he was not. Take the clock from 37. You see the tackle. Yeah. 
Listen, I, I have no problem with the fact that he's inside the tackle box, but it appeared as though the tight end was running a, a route that was not. Uh, Chandler's running a route that's just maybe not the one that Orton expected. But correct me if I'm wrong, I believe there needs to be a receiver within there five does. yards there of the ball. There so. does. It's a great, a dangerous defense right there by the Minnesota Vikings. Very tough break for Buffalo. And it was a late flag, too. Orton with a pump fake going for Hogan. He's got it at the one-yard line. And they are hurrying to the line of scrimmage. Time winding down. Tick, tick, tick at seven. He'll have to spike it. He does. How about this catch from Hogan? Against Xavier Rhodes. Back shoulder, tight coverage on Rhodes. He puts it in the only place that Hogan can get the ball, and Orton is excited. We are down to the wire. One play to win it. What do you think? Sammy Watkins. Ruby Dixon is the lone setback. They did have the timeout left. The Vikings take one defensively. They want to figure it out. Minnesota, that's their first. It's a 30-second timeout. They're unsure themselves, and that gives Orton a breather. They've converted a fourth down in this series. They've overcome sacks. Second and longs, third and longs. You see the road record. And the misery index for Minnesota as a result. When I talked to Doug Marone yesterday, and I've known him a long time since he was an assistant coach with the New Orleans Saints, he said, yeah, this is the kind of game we got to take care of business. This organization long term is in great shape. But immediately, our currency is about winning and winning now. Ball at the two. Five ticks remaining. Hogan is the favorite target in the red zone, but Dixon the lone setback. He is looking to Watkins. He's got it. Touchdown, Buffalo. partner two plays ago you said Watkins from the get-go he's your man he's your number one receiver first round draft pick they traded up from the eighth to the fourth spot I believe to get him and he's paying off well we open the day seeing the Hall of Famer Jim Kelly shake the hand of Teddy Bridgewater to say welcome to the National Football League in your first road game well, the youngster just got schooled by another veteran, Kyle Orton, proving that years in this league at the mission-critical position plays a big role in victory and defeat. 